Despite being a Sega Master System fan, I just hadn't ever given Golden Axe Warrior a real chance until recently on stream. Let's talk about it. Golden Axe Warrior is a completely shameless Legend of Zelda clone. There's no other way to put it. Everything about it, from the general gameplay to even the design of certain enemies, is riffing on the formula laid out by Zelda in 1986. It was developed and released by Sega, hitting the Sega Master System in 1991. If you're keeping track, we're already into the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis lifespan, and the Sega Master System was certainly not doing very well in the US or Japan. It's basically an alternate universe of the Golden Axe arcade game that came out just a few years prior in arcades than the Genesis and Master System. Rather than play as Tyrus, Gilius, or Axe Battler, you'll come across each one of them in the world while you attempt to save that world from Death Adder instead. To do this, you'll need to visit Labyrinth and defeat the boss within to collect the nine gems. Doing so allows you to restore peace to the land or whatever. Though what's actually important is finding all the magic and items you can so you can eventually acquire the Golden Axe, the only item that can actually defeat Death Adder. I'm sure by now you've already begun to notice all the similarities to the original Legend of Zelda, such as collecting nine gems instead of Triforce pieces. I wasn't being cheeky when I said it was a shameless clone. I'm not saying this is necessarily a bad thing, but it can cheapen the experience a bit. Obviously the general aesthetic is inspired by Zelda, and that isn't what I mean, but you have some of the more egregious examples like the Wizrobes, Like Like, and the Moblins. Of course, none of these are actually the names, but most of the enemies aren't even in the manual, and those axe-throwing Moblins are actually called Snoutmen, according to the manual artwork. Or instead of Dark Knight, you have the Dark Soldiers. Completely different. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and we tend to celebrate games that are using the Zelda formula when they do it well. This doesn't feel like a tribute or a unique title that just happens to be a top-down action RPG. This feels like Sega trying their best to copy Nintendo's homework, but just change enough of it. That being said, there are some definite differences, both good and bad. You immediately start off in a little empty square, but unlike Zelda, you only have one direction to go and you're armed to start. Immediately to your left, you'll find the next set of differences. A town that hosts people to talk to, a merchant, an inn you can heal at, and a guy who will save your game. Every town, usually located near a labyrinth, functions like this, making the hunt for new items and ways to heal a lot less shrouded in mystery and exploration. But there's still plenty to find around the map. Everything isn't condensed to town. Once again, much like Zelda, you'll find random bunkers popping up under rocks and trees filled with merchants, heart containers, and even jerks who take your money though some nicer ones that give you money instead. Hello, sir. You better pay up before you leave. Poor Kevin lost 10 horns. You jerk. What, in, what a piece of shit. <laughs> you also come across those three original characters from Golden Axe who will give you items to help you along your way. The overworld feels good to explore and weirdly feels smaller than it really is. I'm not sure why that is. There are a lot of different areas and biomes. You only need to make a few quick trips across the ocean. But after all these years of evolution and game development, for some reason they don't provide any world map. Golden Axe Warrior suffers greatly from this omission. Legend of Zelda has aged as well as it has in my opinion because of the ability to access that information. There was a massive printed map included with the game, and a second quest map thanks to Nintendo Power. Golden Axe Warrior by contrast has this little guy in the manual that covers about a quarter of the entire world. You don't get to see the entire overworld until the very end of the game thanks to an item in the last of the dungeons, which makes no sense. Labyrinths, by contrast, feel a lot more condensed than most other games sharing the style. That doesn't mean they're easier or quicker to get through, quite the opposite in fact. These do have the familiar fill-in-the-map-as-you-go mechanic, but they don't mark anything, not even the boss rooms like Legend of Zelda. As the game goes on, the labyrinths do become larger and you'll start finding warp spots. These act like the underground pass in Zelda, putting you at a new random spot somewhere else on the map. They made a weird decision here, where once you beat the boss and collect the gem, you just have to make your way back out. Usually not a problem, but if enemies start to respawn, you might lose some of that health boost after collecting the gem, and that feels a bit cheap. I have a few gripes with Golden Axe Warrior. Some come with the outdated gameplay styles, some are just odd design choices, but there are some major things that really irritate me throughout the game. First off, healing items are sparse. On occasion, enemies will drop bread, which restore one heart, or a hunk of meat, which restores several. You'll be hoping for these most of the time, but enemy drops aren't exactly high in Golden Axe Warrior. Your only other option is the Golden Apple, which acts like a potion, but it's never found anywhere and costs 100 horn to purchase from most merchants. And that brings us to the next big issue. The entire world functions on a currency called horn, which are literally just horns that you would get from an animal. There is a blue horn worth 5 and regular horn worth 1, and that's it. 
drops are once again super low. I think even lower than health drops, meaning grinding for them is frustrating. So needing to run to a town to buy a golden apple or other item with your very limited supply of money not only becomes a chore, but sometimes just an impossibility. Later on, other items and the inns will also require your attention and cash, like the oil which keeps your armor from rusting and being worthless. Yes, about midway through the game, you need to worry about your armor degrading. You'll also need to give money to certain people to get what I would essentially call required items, such as the earth magic from Axe Battler. Yes, he wants to help you save the world, but he also needs to get a little cash flow going, and he will ask for that twice. What a jerk. You also lose horn every time you game over and choose to continue, which you'll likely be doing most of the time during all the dungeons since you probably don't want to reload and redo everything. So if a dungeon gives you a hard time and you lose all your items and lose your horn from continuing, you'll have to walk out of a dungeon needing to start your grind all over again. It really tarnishes the game for me, and I can't imagine it will make it very good for most other people. Lastly, things feel very unbalanced. Even though you spend all of the game doing things to make you stronger, like any RPG, you spend the majority of it feeling very weak. As you go along, some enemies will take a good chunk of your hearts. Very few ever really take just a part of a single heart. On top of that, your hitbox is kind of all over the place, which isn't anything foreign to the style of game, but that doesn't make it any more acceptable. It really makes boss fights a special kind of annoying, since they are so large. It never feels good to really be on the offensive, constantly being reserved with your attack. Once you get magic and a better sword, things improve a bit, but by then, for most, it will be too little too late. I know it sounds like I'm really tearing this game down, and I kind of am. There's a good reason this game doesn't have the prestige other games like it from that time or now have. And it isn't just because it's on the Sega Master System. I don't think it's all bad. It wouldn't be one of my videos if I just hated the game. And there are good things to enjoy about Golden Axe Warrior. Honestly, if you're a fan of the genre, the Sega Master System, or just a Sega fan in general, and you've never experienced this game, I do highly encourage it. There's a lot of charm to this game despite of the difficulties. It is captivating somehow. I love the soundtrack, for example. I said numerous times while streaming this game that there at least there is a killer song playing while I'm stuck in hell during a dungeon or lost in the overworld. The only issue being that there aren't a lot of songs, so you will be hearing the same couple of songs over and over again. It isn't the most oppressive game graphically either, but I do enjoy its style. Everything has a pretty nice level of detail for the kind of game it is. Plus, there is something charming about the portraits when you talk to NPCs. Nice color choices as well, and it was a smooth experience the whole way. I may have had a few slowdowns, but I can't really think of any off the top of my head. The small improvements made for saving and having towns helps the game feel a little more alive than some other games like it. You can talk to people, get clues, have anchor points in the overworld to get your bearing on what to do next. With other little way-finding possibilities via towns, random people on the map, and the like, exploration feels a bit smoother in that regard, even though it still suffers from the other issues and the lack of a map I mentioned earlier. Really, the entire experience by the end felt satisfactory. I felt accomplished beating it, despite needing some help in a few spots thanks to the lack of direction and a map, and the issues with balancing overall. I did enjoy my time playing Golden Axe Warrior. It is one of those games when it comes together, it really shines, but when the cracks show, it all falls apart quickly. Sega obviously tried too hard to make their version of Zelda, rather than just trying to make a cool RPG. It's a roller coaster, going from super highs to super lows rapidly, so it just never hits a stride that makes you say, oh yeah, this is a good game. If you do want to play Golden Axe Warrior, go for emulation or an EverDrive. Don't even consider grabbing a cart unless you are a serious collector. A loose cart is now hitting $200, and this game isn't worth that price, it's not even close. I can't really think of any game that is, honestly. But load up a ROM, grab a map and a walkthrough in another tab, see how far you can get before looking each step up, and see how much you enjoy it. It might surprise you. Well, that's all I have to say about Golden Axe Warrior. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you have any experience with the game. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Two and a half hearts of damage. That's insane. I did it. I did it. No way. No way. Was that really it? Ha <laughs> ha! Golden Axe Warriors beat. I'm giving myself a round of applause. Pat on the back. <laughs> that was super easy. That was so much easier than I expected that last boss to be. Hey, this is Kevin. Once again, thanking you so much for watching another episode of Retroactive. If you liked it, please hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, all the stuff I'm supposed to say. And I also want to remind you that I do have a Ko-fi account and a Discord. Links will be in the description. Bye.